right? So can you see um, this completed painting? Um, just go with your thumb up like this, if you can. I just need one. Oh yeah, I see it. Okay, so this is what we're aiming for for today. Some of you may have painted your tree with the leaves on. So in your case, then it might be slightly different. Um, I wanted to show you also examples of little mini trees that I've done. So a tree can be something as simple as this. And even though it's just indicating a little bit of greenish, it's nice. And then uh, last week I did the demonstration of doing the tree with the leaves on. So that's something that's an option for you. And let's see. Um, here, this is another example of a tree that I did. I did this one though in acrylic, but I wanna show you how when the light comes from this direction, then you can see how there's more light on these leaves, on these branches with the leaves than on the, on the one on the other side. And that's why uh, the shadow is over here. But we'll have more fun with that in February. So I'm gonna put these aside. Uh, and you can, oh yeah, that's another example. So you can also do, I mean, some of you might've been in this lesson, you can also do a pine tree uh, with just the purple and the yellow and it creates those beautiful uh, pine trees like this. So I'm gonna put those aside back here. And uh, so this is a close-up of um, the rocks as we're going to paint them. And um, this was part of the demonstration that I showed, I think two, week, two weeks ago in the class. Now, if you look at um, these rocks, uh, there are many different colors and many different shades of the same colors. So um, if you look like, for example, over here, you can see nice purple and then right next to it, even deeper purple. Whereas this pointy rock here, it has like this nice gray side with some accents that are even darker of this gray. And then on the other side, the side that's exposed to the light, uh, you can see very light color. It's a very light gray, but there's also different shades of this light gray. And then on this rock here, I don't know if you can distinguish the difference, but there is even some, a little bit of yellow ochre on there. And um, so the color of the rocks are, you know, it's something that, that is interesting to work on. And it's also something that um, varies depending on the weather that day, because the rock has their own color meaning whatever they're composed of uh, will create a certain color. But also uh, the rock will reflect what's around them. So if it's a blue day, they may have a little bit more of a, uh, like a blue sky uh, with the sunny day. They may have a little bit more of a bluish tone to them. Where if it's an overcast day where it, the sky is gray with lots of clouds, then they may be more on the, the, the grayish color. And if there are trees around, like in the forest, then maybe they will be uh, have a little bit of a greenish color. So before we actually move on to painting the, um, the rocks, which I thought I had an example of the rocks that are not painted, um, we're going to prepare our colors and do a little bit of testing of these colors. Um, when painting rocks in a landscape, you have to also remember you're painting a painting and you want the painting to be harmonious. So if there is no brown whatsoever in your landscape, then I would recommend try to stay away from, from the brown, from painting your, your rocks brown because it will stick out 
and there will be no, no other brown to respond uh, to, to your rock color. Um, as I said before, the color reflect uh, other colors that are around. So if you have some nice purple on your tree trunk, for example, well then maybe your rocks will be a nice deep purple for, for uh, the areas where uh, they are in, in the shade. So painting your rocks in harmony with everything else that's in your uh, painting is a very important thing. And that means don't try to bring a brand new color into these rocks. Uh, just try to reuse the colors that you've already used in other areas of your painting. So our, our water is blue and a little pink and our sky is uh, blue and it's got also some nice ochre that's very watery. Um, we have a green grass. And depending on what you chose to do for your tree, so you might have a tree that's more of a brown color for the branches, or maybe you went more for a purpley color for the branches, or more of a, a greenish approach to these branches. So whatever you chose for your tree and the rest of the elements in your painting, uh, those colors are probably the colors that would be the best to use to paint your, your rocks. Now that the colors are ready. So on here, I have a whole lot of different colors because I've been using this for other uh, paintings that I've been doing. But basically at this time, what I've asked you to prepare is a blue, a yellow, and a red. My red is actually in this other little container here. And just because um, I've been using this, I also have a magenta that I prepared, uh, which is a little bit of, uh, it's, it's a lot of red and just a teeny little bit of, of blue. And I also happen to have uh, a purple, but the purple will make if we need some because this one uh, is running low. So let's talk about the color of the rocks. And I'm gonna put this example here. And um, let's start with something simple. And this is what we're gonna start with actually. So as a first step for the rocks, we're going to cover all of the rocks with a mid-tone gray. And, and the gray is a color that we already have in the landscape that we've painted. Um, if we look here, this mountain in the back is kind of a grayish color. And uh, when we look here on the sky, in the mid middle of the sky, it's almost like almost gray where it goes from a yellowish color to a bluish color in the middle where there's a mix of the two. It's kind of, it was kind of grayish color. Or if you look here, this mountain here is more of a brownish color. So we're gonna go and start with a gray color. And to make this color, I'll put this here as my example. Um, and in preparation for painting, all of this, I'm going to mix a color. And to do that, um, I think I might, let's see, how big is this? Yeah. So I'm going to use my round brush. This one is a brush with which um, I can do marvel because it's, I don't know if you can see, it's a sergeant brush. Sergeant did beautiful watercolor paintings and oil paintings. So this is like my lucky brush. It's a round brush and it's still fairly small, but compared with the brush that I used uh, for mixing the color, it's, it's, it's slightly bigger. Now, if you have a small brush like this one, this will work too. If you want to use a filbert like this one that has a nice 
pointy uh, tip, you can use this because with the pointy tip, you can go in the very small areas and with the large, uh, the large um, amount of water and paint that you can gather with this, then you can paint a large area with it. All right, so I'm gonna use this. And to make my gray, what I usually do is, oops, I have a little thing. So I'm gonna use this surface here to make my mix. So I'm gonna start with my blue and I put it here. I put my blue here, okay? Then I completely clean my brush, wipe it on the paper, and I'm gonna use a little yellow and mix it with a little blue. This will give me, so I have more blue than yellow, and it gives me um, like a color like this. It's it gives me an, a nice gray actually. If you if you look at it, this color is nice gray. It's got a little bit of a greenish tone to it, but um, it's really nice. Now, if I were to put even more blue and a bit of water, uh, if I were to, then it would be more of a metallic blue color. So you can tell there's just a little bit of a difference between the two. Now, if I were to use more yellow in this color, then it would turn green and turn like this. So this would be a little bit uh, greenish, but this is the color that I, I wanted to create in the first place. And it would be nice uh, to use this to do an overall tone on, uh, on all of the rocks. Now, uh, so this tone is a gray that is very close to um, teal color or turquoise. Now, some of you may prefer to go more with a gray that is more of a like, more closer to a purple. So to do that, now I'm gonna demonstrate that. And uh, as, as I'm demonstrating these things, it's not a bad idea to take a little strip of watercolor paper or even a whole sheet and, and do these, uh, these testing. This time, I'm gonna start also with a blue in a different space. So if you only have a small little space like this, clean it. But I'm gonna, I have another one right here. So I'm gonna start with my blue. Now I'm gonna go with a purple tone. And to create the purple tone, now I'll completely clean my brush and I take uh, some of the red and using a mix of the red and the blue, and it's gotta be more blue than red because the red is so strong. Now I'm creating a nice purple color. So if you look here, I'm coming with a purple color. And if I put a lot of water, can I put it at a display here? So this is a nice purple color. It's a little bit too purple to be considered a gray. So now I clean my brush completely. I take a teeny little bit of my yellow, not too much. And this yellow, I don't want too much. Uh, I'm gonna mix it up in this purple that I had just made. And now I'm getting a beautiful gray color. That's very little pigment in it. There, you can see it better now. So, this is going to drip. So, this was my purple with just blue and red. And now, here I add a little bit of yellow. So, it gave me more of a grayish color. Now, what I'm going to do is because I want this to be cooler, I'm going to add a little bit more blue to this. 
and I'll show you what that means. So to this color that I have, I'm adding even more blue. And now, oops, uh oh, I dropped it. Now I can show you how this is becoming a cooler color. I don't know if you see the nuances. Newer. A cooler color than this. So, um, does this help? It, can you go like this if you if you find this helps? Yes. Okay. All right. So now we have made a gray that was that we started with a purple and we added a teeny bit of yellow. Now, if this becomes too brown, we can add a little bit more blue back to into it to create a gray. And here we had created a gray by adding a little bit of yellow to our blue, a lot of water, and that created um, some kind of a, a, a more like a turquoise gray. Now use the one that you like most. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, put an initial quote of the gray that we like the most over all of the all of the the rocks and what's going to happen is it's going to give us something a color like this over everything now in some areas it's very light here and once it has dried the areas where we want it to be lighter we will I'll lift the color. That's what we'll do. But one thing at a time. So the first step, and I will demonstrate. You can uh, uh, you can watch, and then after that, I'll give you a little time um, to uh, to paint it. So I really like this gray created with my blue and my yellow. So that's what I'm going to use. Now, too much yellow will give you green. So you got to be extra careful as to how much yellow you use. Very little. And this is a watery kind of color that we're going to we're going to put in here on here. So I have my color and I've realized that I want to wet the surface first before I paint it. Because I want to make this um, fluid thing. So I'm just going to use the other brush to wet it and it's important to wet all the way to the edge of where the water is don't put too much water just enough and make sure yeah, that you go all the way to the edge of the water by wetting and that you keep a straight edge on this on this side here So I'm wetting this with a little bit of water, not too much. And I can't really see because the light is, I don't have enough light, I don't think, to do this. So I'm wetting with uh, only a little bit of water on my brush. All right, once I've done this, then I can use my lace gray here to paint this. If it's too dark, I can add a little, little bit of water to it. But because I have wet my paper a little bit, I'm not creating sharp edges anywhere. And by doing this, you should not lose completely your drawing. If you're losing your drawing, that might be because you're painting a little too dark. So I'm adding more water, more water. I didn't dip back into my colors yet because uh, I don't want this to be 
a dark color. So this is my first step. And in some areas it might be darker, in some area it might be lighter. And that's okay because rocks have dark areas, light areas, and at this time we're not defining specific rocks. But we got to make sure that we're covering um, all the way to the edge of the water. There. So this is my first step of the rocks. You can tell in some areas it's darker, lighter, and that's all good. I'm let this dry while you guys paint it. Now that this portion is dry, um, if by any chance you have done like me and um, see this line here, whoops, no, you don't see it. See this line here, it went a little bit outside the line. So what you can do is you can wet it a little bit and then with a paper towel, uh, pick it up so that uh, it won't go outside the line because this cement wall uh, has a pretty straight line. So I like to do that. I'm gonna completely take my brush, my small one, and dry it here. Make sure that it's clean. Yeah, dry it on my paper towel. And I just wet a little bit of it. I'm gonna put it sideways because uh, it's easier for me to do this. I'm just gonna wet this little section here. And then with a paper towel, I, I dry it. And now my line, now my line that was not straight here, now it is. All right, so that's a little trick you can do. Um, now we're going to uh, make uh, a deeper purple uh, this time. And um, to do this, we're going to use the blue and the red, and we're not going not to add too much water. So here on this surface, I have this dried up blue and this dried up water, uh, this dried up red. And I'm going to dip my brush in a little bit of water, not too much. And I'm going to use my smaller brush to do this. So this brush is the one that I'm going to use. And I'm just wetting my blue and my red and mixing them together. Just a little water, not too much. And it's giving me a nice uh, purple. So the color that I want for this is a deeper purple. So as you can see now, it's not a very deep purple, so I don't have enough pigment in this mix. Although this color is a nice purple, it's not quite as deep as I would like it. So I'm going to clean my brush because it's purple now. I'm going to get more of my blue pigment. There's a lot of pigment. Uh, clean my brush, get the red pigment, put it here. Yeah, that's good. And now I can mix the two because the blue is not quite as strong as the red. I'm going to take a little bit of red, not too much. And that's why I decided to clean my brush first and put it in the blue. And now because I put less water, you can tell how much deeper this is. And if I were to extend it, you can tell it's it's the same well, equivalent purple as I originally had. But this one has definitely more pigment in it because I put less water. So that's how I get the very deep purple. Now, um, we're going to use this deep purple now. And later on, I will show you how to make a deep brown. 
um, or maybe some of you might prefer to do a deep brown. And to do that, what you need to do is you need to, now I'm changing brush just so I can go faster. And I'm using a little bit of my yellow, very pigmenty. And then I mix this with this deep purple. Just a little bit of it. I'm not mixing the whole thing because I want to use that, that deep, deep purple. And I got this. It's actually a deep magenta. So it's almost brown. So that's another tone that could be used in the shadow of the rocks. So I'm going to use the purple. But if you want to go ahead and use this one, you can do so. Or you can use a mix of the two. I mean, one after the other. So using this deep purple. Now what I'm going to do is I want to define um, the, 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 the rocks. And I'm going to start by putting some shadow behind the rocks. The, the, water, the, the light comes from this direction like this. It's hitting the rocks. So all of the surface on top will be light. And all of the surface that are here on the right hand side of the rocks will be what's in the deeper shadow. And also what's facing the viewer is also in the shadow. So using my nice deep purple that I have made, I'm going to start by defining this rock here. So right now we're painting wet on dry. Rocks can also be painted uh, wet on almost dry. Makes it makes it for an interesting uh, for interesting edges. So this is the back of this painting. This is where the cement wall is, and I'm looking at this example that I have. That's where I'm. I'm looking at for my example. And then this is the side of the rock. Now, a rock edge is very rarely a clean cut uh, and very straight line. So if your edges are a little bumpy, well, that's quite acceptable just because it's uh, that's what rocks are. So now I've defined the, the side of this rock, and this is the back of it. And then there is another rock here that's on the other side of it. Note how I have not dipped my, uh, my brush again in the water. I'm just continuing. And it's OK that it's a different, gives me a different purple. because the color is very rarely the exact same for all the rocks. And then there is the rock in front. It's also right here like this. It's like another skinny one. Now this is giving me some sort of, a, and there is a crack here in the rock. Very interesting. All right, so now by putting this purple, I've defined a little bit of the first two rocks, like so. And in certain areas, it's a lot darker. In other areas, it's lighter, and it's acceptable to do so. Um, so I'm going to continue painting these rocks, and I hope that you follow along. If you prefer to watch it first and watch the, the, demonstra the whole demonstration and then paint, that's okay too. Um, so now at this time, I'm going to continue defining the rocks and uh, using that deep color. 
Now the next rock that I have is another flat one over here. It's skinnier and it defines this pointy one that I have here, like so. Yeah. So the pointy one has a side that's dark and it comes down like, like this. Um, and down here, there's another rock in the shadow somehow that's lit up. So that's why I go like this. Go back to my purple. I can make it very dark if I want to. Yes. And it's very important that in this process, you remember to breathe. Yep, yep, that's something you have to remember from time to time when painting. Um, so there's another little rock here. I mean, having just a few rocks is okay. I'm doing this a little bit more uh, detailed so you can see how it could be done. Now, can you see okay? I hope you can see okay. Now I'm defining the rocks by adding up the deep shadows. So now we have almost done with defining the rocks. So I'm continuing to dip into my deep shadow. Um, and after this, this um, triangular kind of rock, there's another one here, like so, on my drawing anyway. Mm -hmm. Trying to make sure that against the cement wall, it remains um, a straight line. Now, when I paint, if I do something like this, I tend to um, paint one color and right next to it, I'll put the other color so that the two blend and they bleed. Um, but I'm trying to keep it simple. Uh, and now I'm gonna add just a little bit of, little bit of yellow in here to make it a little brown. I'm trying to, uh, oh, 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 that's not what I was supposed to do. So I'm going to just go like this and there. So now now what I'm doing is I'm trying to create this darker areas along the cement wall, almost all the way to the end. Now this should be very skinny toward the end. And I'm going to remove some of the pigment. I don't want to ha have it too dark as I go up here. Now this wall, this rock here, if you look at the photo, is somehow darker than the water. And um, as it goes up, then it can go watery, more watery. And now I'm making all of this purple or kind of a grayish purple. Maybe this is getting too dark. So I use the paper towel, wipe it a little bit if I want to. <clears throat> I'm getting a little bit more of a purple. And so this portion doesn't have to be very well this, uh, defined. So now I've indicated in most cases, all of the darks where I have the shadows and it already looks like rocks basically. And this area here, 
I just put I, I just put this a little darker. If you look at the photos, this is darker than the water. So that's why I did this. It may be a little too dark at this time, but I can also, I can lift a little bit of this pigment at a later time. So right now what I want is I want to let all of this dry and then I'm gonna come back with uh, putting, putting some nuances in the rocks and the top of the rocks to give it some shape. But it already looks like rocks, if you see. At this time, our rocks have uh, an initial uh, color that we put, the light gray that we had put throughout the whole thing, which looked uh, like it was quite dark when we originally put it. But after we put the darker purple for the shadowy areas, now this initial gray that we put doesn't look so dark. If I show these rocks here now, which I finished uh, two weeks ago, now you can tell how there is the very deep dark gray, purple, I mean, and there is the lighter areas like here, but there is some mid-tones here and here and here and here. And these mid-tones are not the same mid-tones everywhere. And these rocks up here appear to be a little lighter than what we had it on ours. So we're going to work on those things. Okay, I messed up my whole system here. So, so far, we have used the, the very light grays or light tones. And then we have used the much darker purple on this one, this little purple here that we've used. Now the time to use uh, tones that are in between the very dark and the lighter gray. And to do that, we can use less pigment or we can use lighter colors. We can have some fun with that. So first of all, I'm going to use, uh, I'm going to make a nice, it's going to be like a bluish color almost. And to do that, I'm going to use my small brush. So to do this part, I'm going to use my smaller brush, this one. Now, if you have been using a brush like this, you're going to mostly use the tip of it. Uh, you can all use, also use a flat brush if you want, like this. This could work too. I like the wrong, the wrong brush. It becomes a preference. I mean, after a while, you'll get to know which brush you prefer to use in which situation. So oops, this is how my colors were before. So I'm going to leave them in the same order they were. And um, I'm going to dip my brush into uh, the water. And now I'm reusing this color that I had. Oops, sorry. So I was, I had started mixing my blue. Now this blue is the blue that I had mixed with a little bit of yellow, not too much. And I want to make sure that I have sufficient pigment. I'm getting a little bit more pigment with just a little yellow. And now I'm going to test it on my test strip. I'm going to put a little bit here. Oh, so not watery that it's not even putting any color on it. So I have this color here now. It's a nice blue. It's, it's almost like a blue turquoise. And it's lighter than my deep purple that I have here. But I can say that it's also darker than the other colors that I had originally used. And that's what I want. I want a mid-tone, like a one in between. So using this and looking, you can either look at your photo that I sent you. 
You can look at your drawing uh, that you have done of these rocks. And in my case, I'm gonna use a, a, a previous example that I did. And I'm gonna give some texture to this rock. Like, so this one here is a rock that is somewhat flat, but one can think that it has some, you know, different angles and stuff. And so I'm not gonna use this color everywhere. And I'm just gonna put a little bit of it like this over here. Now I'm washing my, cleaning my brush and maybe leaving it a little, a little watery. And I'm just gonna play and move this around a little bit like this. So you can do that. And even if it bleeds into the next color, that could be interesting. And now I'm using this over here. Sometimes the finger is the best, you know. And I'm looking back at those colors. So I know that this one here is a little, it's a little darker on this side. And I have the pointy rush. Now the pointy rush is not time to do this one yet. But this one here, like this. So this is really something where you can be free. You can be, you can do it the way that you want it to do it. Uh, but your best reference would be um, to look at your photo. So now I'm also going to dip a little bit into my purple, but make it more watery than before. So therefore, if I were to show you on my little strip here. So now I'm gonna use this purple that is more watery and, and lighter than before. Mix it up. Like so. So when you know, when you have a, a lighter uh, area next to the very dark, uh, next to the very dark, um, shadowy, well, it could be that it's not that dark, that light next to it. So you can go and go ahead and put a little darker area here. This one. This is to define my pointy rock. Uh, so I've done this like this, and now I want to vary a little bit more. So clean my brush. I'm getting a little yellow, and I'm using this yellow into my purple. Now this gives me a brownish color. It's this color. So it's a little bit different from this one because this one has a little bit of a brownish color. But I want it to be a little lighter, so I'm dipping my brush into the water. Now, now this is not quite enough pigment, so a little bit more pigment, and I'm getting this. So that could be interesting. Because what I want, actually, is I want to create this pointy rock. See this pointy rock here? It's got some very deep, deep colors here like this, but it's got some deep, but not so deep over here and at the base here. So I'm going to try and do that. I have the very deep color here and I'm going to add this other color, which is kind of brown. Like so. And if I wipe my uh, brush on the paper, now it's going to be even lighter. And I can add a little bit of this over here. So now my pointy rock is starting to shape. And I like this color. So I'm going to use some of it on this rock here. A little bit, just a little bit. 
So it becomes nuances here and there. And one thing that I've just noticed is that in this area here, let me see up here. I had a rock here in this area, which I completely lost because in the new version that I made, this whole area is dark. So I'm gonna lift an area to create this, this rock. So I dry my brush almost and here, have my little rock. So I'm wetting this little section here, like so. And with my paper towel, now you added this rock. Look at that. Isn't that cool? And if I don't like the shape of it, I can always vary its shape. So I'm getting some of this color here. And say, oh yeah, I don't like the shape. I like it better like this, like a little pointy rock. So now it's giving me this. And I can play with that, you know, more and more. Now, <clears throat> let's see, where are we at? Uh, so now I'm getting a little bit of my purple color. I think this rock here could use a little bit more of shadow side, like so. <coughs> Excuse me. And um, yeah. Now I'm going to make an even deeper purple by using the red with a lot of pigment and the blue with a lot of pigment. And this other brown that I had before. And I'm going to put that right here on the side of my pointy rock. And I'm going to go up on my pointy rock with this very deep color. So we're using these colors here. And um, shaping the rocks by using its shadow, by painting its shadow in darker version of what we had before. I want this rock to go a little further forward. So I'm just painting into the water with my really dark color there. All right, so the one thing that does not please me very much is the color of this, these rocks here that are in the background. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, with my brush, I'm going to lift some of the paint. And as I do this, Um, then I can use my paper towel to dry it, or maybe I did not lift enough, so I'm going to do it again. This is a little bit better. So now my rocks are looking pretty good. So the ones in the front are very well defined. 
and then going towards the background, then it loses the interest. So I don't have to define them so well. And I find that they're a little too wide. So with my dry brush, I'm going to lift some of it completely over here. And this will allow the water to seem like it's coming in a little bit more. Because the water is so light in this area. Yeah. I'm trying to avoid having a, a dark edge on this side. Because the light comes from the left. So very unlikely that there is some darkness coming this way. All righty then. So this, these are my rocks. They're okay looking. 